Sports, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it kicks off next on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Acrisure Stadium on the north shore of the Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. The kicker, Chris Boswell, has it ready to go, and we are underway from Pittsburgh. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Leading them out, a first-round pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, former Clemson Tiger, Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure is about to get to him. Looking to throw right away is Watson. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards on the play. And we see the emphasis early here. Get your star receiver involved, able to do it successfully. Not a bad start to begin with, that's for sure. And to me, this play says, our guy is better than your guy's because you know a player of his stature, he won't just be single covered all game long. It's gonna involve multiple people, and right away, they told the other team, guess what? He's just better. Watson on first down. Steps away to his left. Oh, a heck of a move. He'll get this one down near the 20 yard line, just shy of the 20. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. I am willing to bet that he got a monster grin on his face when he saw what was happening. Man coverage was so committed to denying a big throw that it pulled attention away from him, and he had an easy lane to hit, and hit it he did. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Now Watson. one incomplete. Offense is moving it a little bit, having them back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Back to throw, Watson. And oh, it's incomplete. Oh, it would have been six points, but somehow he couldn't rein it in. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. To throw is Watson. Dancing to his left. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, Defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of him, and I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell into blue. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And on the opening drive of the afternoon, the defense forces a turnover on downs. Now Rudolph on first down. That's caught. Allen Robinson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. But well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. 
Now left side on the swing pass. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. It's another first down, and that'll be a gain of 21 yards. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing, and they got it out to him on the left side, and he did exactly that. Excellent run after the catch. Rudolph on first down. His throw incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. And they'll run for the first time with Najee Harris. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. And well, he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there. And it'll turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. As they've got it as we resume action. Rudolph loses the football. It's out. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. Oh, able to avoid him. Yeah, they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Heck of a start, a 30-yard pickup on their first play from scrimmage. I can say this from experience, especially from a defensive back's perspective. There's not many things more terrifying than a toss sweep or a pitch play and all that beef out in front of the runner. Yeah, I had an old coach say three words on those plays, toss or pitch. Set the edge, heard them over and over. A lot of times they roll the edge, and when they do that, that's why you can go for a long way. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turning around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. Cooper, 34 yards, and the Browns post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Hopkins with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So they only needed three plays on that drive, and it's Amari Cooper who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They had the fumble on the last drive, wound up leading to the opening touchdown. Now they'll try again here, first and 10. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy. That pressure gets to him again. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. 
Harris running straight ahead. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. No gain on the play. It's fourth down. The Steelers send out their punter now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he'll just punch it out of there, and it's not a great kick. Returnable for Grant. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. Here comes Amari Cooper and the rest of the Cleveland offense. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. So this defense coming up with a takeaway, and maybe that's something that can bring a little life to that sideline. Well, I don't want to say that they've been sleepwalking through this first half because that's simply not true, but you're right. We haven't seen a lot of fire from these guys, really, on either side of the ball. So maybe that's the catalyst that they needed to get them back into this game. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. From the gun, here's Rudolph. Man open is Robinson. He's across midfield. And finally taken down at the 34. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Here comes a first down throw from Rudolph. Can't get away, and he's taken down. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Got his man, it's Warren. Holding offense. Unbelievable. James Daniels, the guard, called for the penalty there. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Back to throw, Rudolph. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Not wanting to risk another sack. They'll play it safe with a run. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Holding offense. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. And they will get to him behind the line, but the clock continues to tick down. Call it a gain of four, but not enough. The punt team going to need to be summoned here on fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Here comes Grant on the return. Touchdown and a stunning end of the first half. And they kicked it to him. They kicked it to him. When you've got a guy that fast back there to receive punts, that's a nightmare for the guy game planning, the special teams coach, but it's also a nightmare that's for the punter. Game. Sometimes they get so nervous that they miss hit the ball and kick it right to him. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that will take us to the end of the first half of play. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, we now proceed to the start of the second half. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. A two-touchdown game, 14-0 the score as we get rolling again here in this second half. 
And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. and They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They and nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. So that changes things. Here's first and 10 all the way up at the 45. They'll keep it on the ground, Harris again. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Now the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired, I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run, who knows? They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion left. On second down, this is Harris. Yeah, he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Rudolph. And he's taken down. This will be a brown sack. Multiple rushers break through to drop in for the seventh time this game. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. This is taken at the 23. 35 yards that time on the punt, and the Browns will take over first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, is it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? They run again on first down, Chubb. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Three quarters have come and gone. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. From the 42 now, here's second and two. Here's Watson on the move to his left. And that is taken in by Njoku. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 36 yards on the play. No let up in this passing game. They've been a well-oiled machine throughout. And actually saw a few guys on the sidelines at the end of the third quarter doing the old hold up four fingers college sign, meaning the fourth quarter is ours. And they certainly weren't kidding. On first down, Watson. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll run with Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Browns have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Hopkins with the extra point, and it's now 21 to nothing. The drive summary that time, five plays. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off, as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. 
And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. How about one last great play defensively, and that should, for all intents and purposes, finish off this shutout. That's as good a defensive performance as we've seen in a long, long time. And I know as a team they will celebrate, but I will guarantee you the defensive guys, they'll get together somewhere and have their own private celebration. A shutout? That's something to be cherished. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. Letting one fly deep for Cooper. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Again, a good friend in football always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. Going deep here for Bryant. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Buying time to his left. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And the offense moving quickly to the line. And Watson's going to throw it here. Forced out to his left. Oh, some strong running. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Here's Watson being chased out left. He's got a man that's caught left sideline. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. Watson now to throw. Steps away. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Deshaun Watson. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Browns up the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. Well, partner, when a team's up this big, this late in the game, I always wonder what's their motivation because if it's me, I'm thinking about pulling on the reins a little bit. But for them, I don't think it's in their DNA. It's not their head coach's makeup at all. I think his opinion is, you stop us. We're not supposed to pull back ourselves. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. <laughs> I think this is just going to be a function of the times we live in now. Very similar to the bat flip in baseball. Everyone's got to start to get comfortable with this. But to me, this is just rubbing it in. You got a big lead. Go ahead and take the extra point. One thing to keep in mind, though, karma's still out there and sometimes has a way of catching up with you. And the touchdown apparently not enough. They want more, an onside kick. And they've got it. They recovered it. Wait, hang on now, though. There's a penalty flag down. Yeah, we saw that one up here, CD. Offensive team, they touched that before it went 10 yards. Obviously, such a fine line, letting it go the required 10 yards but also getting to it before the hands team can. Just didn't time it out right, and that results in a flag. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Second and 10, Rudolph again. Got an open man, it's Pickens. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. One last throw here for Rudolph. And that will be incomplete. As 
time has run out on this football game. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. No, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. Oh, yeah.